Hello listeners, welcome to Views on Health. On the program today, we have Professor Pujita Vikramasinghe, Senior Professor in Pediatrics, Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. And Professor Pujita Vikramasinghe is also Consultant Pediatrician at the Lady Ridgeway Hospital, the premier children's hospital in Sri Lanka. Having said that by way of an introduction, the topic that we're going to discuss is COVID and its impact on children. In Sri Lanka, like in so many other parts of the world, uh, education has been impacted because of COVID and in various degrees, various stages, and of course it is country specific. Our focus is on Sri Lanka and with that I would like to invite you Professor to give us an idea as to how professionally, medically, you would define children. As far as we are concerned, the lay perspective is, okay, they are born, they are babies, they are toddlers, they are this, that, and they go into teenagers. So from a scientific perspective, first could you tell us who children are? Yeah, actually, uh, children, of course, we define from birth till 18 years of age, according to the UN Conventions of the Right of the Child. And then, of course, uh, it is divided into several stages depending on their growth and maturity. So the first year of life, of course, we take them as infants. Then, of course, going up to about two years, we call them as the uh, toddlers. And then, of course, uh, till five years, they were called as preschoolers. So then, of course, early childhood we take till about eight years and then thereafter till about 10 years we take as uh, late childhood. Then, of course, 10 to 18 years we take as adolescent age group. So that is how the basic uh, categorization that we do for children. So it's interesting to know how COVID has impacted on children. Yeah, actually COVID has impacted children in several ways, I would say. As another viral infection, it has had its effect on the children by the children contracting the illness. And as a result of that, of course, children have fallen ill and they have been had to come to school, hospital. And the majority of them, of course, just passed by, got a febrile illness, which would have lasted for about a couple of days. Then on its own, it would have settled. And uh, thereafter, they have been quite okay. However, we have been seeing a minority of children also getting what is called the post-COVID syndrome, which we call as MIS-C, that is multi-system inflammatory uh, syndrome of children. That is, of course, affecting a little bit of abdominal pain. Then they may develop a diarrhea with vomiting. They will also have running fever, temperature for about three to five days. And uh, a minority of them also could also present with a little bit of pressure drop in them. So the, my main message is, of course, you don't have to worry very much about uh, COVID as such in children. It's another illness. So what parents should be doing is actually making sure that the child is resting properly, that they are given adequate amount of liquids. And uh, then also uh, the child should be given the adequate amount of food and if whatever the child likes to eat and if fever persists for more than 48 hours better to bring it to a doctor's notice and then get the medication and also what they should also remember is if a child develops diarrhea and if it goes on for more than one and a half two days then also to seek medical attention because it may not be a simple diarrhea and sometimes we see majority fair number of children may have not had a real clear history of coming into contact with the person with COVID infection, nor they would have had any symptoms, had been totally asymptomatic, but just presenting with this uh, condition. The doctors are well aware of this, so they start early treatment and uh, happy to say that we have not lost any child because of this condition, really. So that is the direct impact of COVID on children. But of course, the indirect impact is that they have been sort of totally lost two years of socialization in their life. 
So at different levels, the children have missed their schools, their interaction with the next level of their society, that is the school, their same age peers, that they have missed it. So like that. And on top of that, they have been sort of isolated more or less into their homes because they have not been had the opportunity even to uh, uh, interact with their even their close family members other than those who are staying within their household. So this has caused a lot of issues, especially loss of school, I would say, is one of the biggest impacts that they have caused. Uh, they, it has affected them. Uh, especially if I take now their online classes, their education to some extent is happening. But of course, if you look at the physical impact of that and the psychological impact, they are mainly seated in front of a screen. They would have their classes now going on in the morning for whenever the schools were there. Then in the afternoon also they had their extra classes, whatever the supportive work. So they were spending large number of hours in front of this tool, which of course some of them are using headphones and various other uh, gadgets to get proper reception. And definitely in this process their eyes as well as the ears would get a little bit of long term damage, which of course they should be conscious about that and they should have adequate breaks and especially for the, when it comes to the eyes, whenever they can wear, they should be try to wear some cooling glasses in front of the uh, screen. And also they, I always advise them to just keep it, place it in front of a window or something where whenever they are resting, they take their eyes away from the screen, they should be seeing a little bit of in-depth far uh, scenery that would help to relax their eyes. Otherwise, if it is just against a wall, they always again uh, w uh, focus themselves onto something on the wall, which would be a big strain on the uh, eyes, as well as also, whenever possible, try to avoid using headphones, but keep it uh, open and try to listen to the normal speakers that come from the device. Then, of course, they are seated for long hours. And most of the people, of course, get down some food item to their comfort or the parents, of course, would bring it. And then they are, of course, almost like potato couch, seated and eating. And they don't have or hardly have any physical exercise. Many people don't go out of the home or even to their own garden if they have it. And uh, that is one of the biggest problems. Then, of course, the late hours of activity. I do see because I also have children and I have also seen this experience even in my home that they are having these classes at odd hours of the day, maybe early morning, late night, which is of course not a very healthy thing because if the schools were functioning, they would have had a sound sleep most of the time from 10 p.m. till at least 5 o'clock in the morning. But now they go on till 10, 11 in the night, even more than that, and then sometimes they wake up early. So my request to most of these teachers is try to accommodate to the usual timetable we had pre-COVID where we had the physical classes and try to accommodate this and give them adequate rest. Especially at night they should have a proper sleep. That is very, very important because that itself will bring down the immunity and if they get exposed to COVID also that will have a further bad impact on them rather than having a healthy child getting COVID uh, part and parcel of a common illness in the community. So those are some of the main things. Then of course the psychological impact which is of course a huge. One thing is that they are uh, cut off from the rest of the society and to a great extent now because of these classes they have got cut off from their family and on top of that putting forward the excuse that we have classes and uh, uh, improper timetabling also has made them given the freedom or given the excuse to use the phone or whatever surfing device and uh, go uh, all around the internet and of course they will get addicted to internet some people will get addicted to uh, computer games various sort of internet based games various uh, illicit sort of uh, websites and on top of that, they could be easily be a prey of those who are uh, wandering in the 
internet and we have seen that even in this country unfortunate situations what have occurred so the psychological impact and all this is very very huge so sometimes it's difficult for the parents also to control this but of course i think that's why i always request from the teachers also to work on a particular timetable then the parents also uh, know when they need the device when they do not need the device because it's very difficult to handle the stubborn age of adolescence and they are actually stubborn because not they are inherently stubborn but the circumstances have made them to adapt themselves and they are really frustrated because they don't have their peers they can't really uh, communicate the way they used to communicate they don't see the society as large so there is huge things so that's why i always say that the impact of covid more than the illness directly the other circumstances have, which have pushed we would really see in three to four years time to come so our important uh, responsibility would be try to get these children back into their normal life or near normal life i mean it will not be the near normal life we used to but the near normal life is also not that bad because what i mean by the near normal is actually you take the precautions but you try to associate interact with your usual society as much as possible so i'm actually happy to see that the schools are at least step by step going to be reopened and then the children will be able to go get back to schools and then of course the near normal thing is that they should be wearing their face mask maybe the face shield hand washing facilities then of course trying to go to school when they are possible in their private vehicle or if they can walk that would be the best thing or cycle that then of course uh, maintaining the distance providing the children with giving their personal water bottle their food all that and trying to not share these things even their utensils even their school uh, instruments like pencils pens whatever uh, so that way i think we should get back to near normal and work that way or the new normal way and uh, function schools as much because education is not the main thing provided by schools i mean people think okay now the children are online they are getting there this is good actually for the higher classes but still they don't get the chance to do their practicals they don't develop their skills they will get knowledge but knowledge always you can't apply you have to have it backed by the skills and that is totally lost and especially this would affect the primary and the preschool children so what i would like to request the parents is don't be scared that your child is not vaccinated and who can't send there is nothing like that you can send provided that you take the precautions and send these children and then on top of that of course you can also see that uh, there are extra curricular activities they have lost i mean children learn a lot from the extra curricular activities their societies then of course on the field where they are play they may be a member of a team they may have lost their leadership abilities because they did not get the opportunity so that is going to affect the nation as a whole in the long run because this is the place where they get all this uh, experience so then of course definitely the socialization has been lost and of course in this country about 1.5 million children out of the 4 and a half million children school going children they get a meal or a glass of milk that of course especially the meal for about almost 1 million children is a very big help from a nutritional point of view because it contains fair amount of calories and it's well organized program and these children's health of course Uh, and malnutrition will also get affected because of this so these are all indirect impacts of covid so the most important thing is we should try to get back to school as early as possible and try to give this with taking adequate precautions and uh, see for see through this period and try to get it right Well, Professor, thank you. That's a very lucid and detailed explanation on uh, the current situation in Sri Lanka and where children are concerned and how COVID has impacted on their day-to-day lives. We're talking about um, children across the board. 
And um, yes, I think steps are being taken by the education authorities to reopen schools, uh, spacing them out of course in a gradual basis, yes. because I, I'm sure lots of um, uh, things have got to fall into place in terms of uh, facilities, distancing children, so and with the schools can accommodate all the children at the same time is moot. Well, we leave it to the authorities to handle that, but. On focusing on the health aspect, like you said, if if I can ask you to please um, uh, tell us about, uh, like, say from the two years plus in the stage that you broke them up as yeah. to toddlers, you know, then the early childhood and uh, uh, sort of when they go on to the preschool, of course, early childhood and the, and the other childhood group, like the 10 years, in fact, the older ones. And how, I mean, education is one side of it which they have definitely lost out. Uh, it was stated that online education per se does not have the same effect as a physical class that is being conducted. Of course, we know that. But maybe they can catch up on that. But the psychological aspect is what is really cons of concern. And uh, you quite rightly focused on that. And I hope uh, all the parents, grandparents, teachers listening to our program would have... Uh, uh, noted what you said and uh, something for them to think about and act on in the interest of the children in, in their families. So how can we uh, uh, sort of uh, understand the loss to children, loss in terms of their social interaction, uh, their sort of um, uh, growth, mental growth, uh, etc., uh, from this two plus year age group? Yeah, because actually two plus age group is the age group that is now interacting to a different levels of society. First, they just had their mother, father, maybe a sibling who was interacting, and now they are little by little gaining some form of independence. They can walk, they can move, they can talk to a certain extent, they can express themselves. So this is the age and now they are not small. They are considered that they are a little bit of tough and hard, who could interact and go without any fear to the society, see their meet their grandparents, meet their uncles, aunts, their cousins, whoever, outside their house. So all this unfortunately had been lost. Now the effect of this is actually why these children need this is actually that is the place where they the brain can grow physically it can have its mass you give the nutrients it will it is just like a house that has been just built that uh, you have just put a little bit of wires here and there but the interconnection between the wires is very important now the neurons what are the the the, the primary uh, element in the brain which uh, takes the messages from here and there, they have to form connections between neurons. So there can be 1 billion, 10 billion, whatever n number of neurons. But if they don't have their connection, then of course the brain will not function properly. Especially their reasoning out, all that has to come through that. So all this will be developed when they begin to get impulses from their five main sensors. And that will be to a certain extent will be monotonous, lost if they are just in one place. So they have to explore. So that is one of the biggest problems that we will see. That's why I said it will the impact on the younger child is very, very high compared to the old children. They actually at different different ages you will get different different uh, effects. So considering the long term effect on that aspect would be immense on a younger child the preschooler, the toddler, the preschooler, that age, uh, compared to the old age. So even in the old age, what will happen is that they will be sort of, as I said earlier also, they will be isolated more or less, and they are just on their own. They will have only maybe one or two friends that is also on a virtual platform, not in real, that normal jovial smile and talk and even getting into a small squabble is not there anymore. So that type of things all are part of the learning curve, which will give the opportunity at different levels. So that has been totally lost. So what actually what the parents would be able to do is actually 
they should have certain amount of family times more than before. So sometimes it may be tough, but of course that is actually the norm. Where they get together, one thing is they have their meals together, then of course they have maybe television time or some other recreational activity and they maybe play some indoor game, something like that. And especially if they have a pet, I think this is the best time that they should have a pet or they could have the pet because that would transform a lot in the family and that would be a focal point where they can get together. So I think these activities have to be planned out much more in a frequent manner and in a more structured manner and get together and make it a purpose to have that act interaction rather than not as a granted thing which we used to do in the past. So that is one of the most important thing that the parents have to do uh, in order to have this. Then of course the siblings, if there are two, three members in the family, then they should have more together because these are times that they can create some amount of peer balancing between them even although they do not have the same age. And now when it comes to the adolescent age, of course, these are the times that their body changes and then they have a lot of problems, they have a lot of things. Still, especially in our society, the gap between the parents and the child is little bit far. So they may not be able to. This is a time that they can actually, this was the time that they usually discuss this with their peers and sort it out. So they are not getting this information and sometimes going in search for these in the internet will also make them really get into real great trouble and have developed bad habits. So that's why. So I think the family as a whole has to play a huge because now they are concentrated into the family environment and have more interaction. Uh, Professor, I am reluctantly compelled to, uh, to curtail this discussion, interesting as it is, uh, at this point in time, but may I please invite you to be back with us on the program next week too, when we can continue uh, discussing this very important aspect of COVID and its impact on children. Uh, and... Um, Hopefully, if you can say yes to it, that'd be wonderful. Yes, actually, I'm very happy to contribute and uh, share Thank my you. knowledge. Thank you so much, Professor. So, listeners, at this point in time, we end this very interesting discussion on COVID and its impact on children. And rest assured that Professor Pujita Vikramasinghe, Senior Professor in Pediatrics, Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, and Consultant Pediatrician, Lady Ridgeway Hospital, also in Colombo, will be back with us on the program next week to further enlighten us, educate us, and share his knowledge with you, our listener, on COVID and its impact on children. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. Look forward to having you on the program next week at the same time. My thanks also go to Nishanta Manik Devela for technical assistance. I'm Fatima Razi Kardin saying good night and hoping to be with you next Monday, same time on Views on Health. <laughs>